Good day my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. God said, Warn everyone. The last prophecy of the Bible is about to be fulfilled. The upcoming words might shake you to the very core of your being. This is why I request you to kindly pay complete attention and show discernment about the upcoming words. Revelation 22 verses 12 to 13 says, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. From the beginning of time, God has spoken through his prophets, revealing his plans and purposes to his people. He has given us his word, the Holy Scriptures, as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. But now, as we stand on the precipice of the last days, the Lord is issuing a final warning. The last prophecy of the Bible, the one that has been foretold since the dawn of creation, is about to be fulfilled. These words spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation are not just a promise, they are a declaration of what is to come. The final prophecy, the culmination of all things, is at hand. The King of Kings is preparing to return, and His coming will shake the heavens and the earth. The signs around us are 100% proof that we are living in the end times, and Jesus can return at any time. There is no assurance of when He will return, but there is one assurance, that He will return. The prophecy of the Bible is not just a single event, it is the fulfillment of everything that has been written. It is the return of Christ in glory, the resurrection of the dead, the final judgment, and the establishment of the new heavens and the new earth. It is the ultimate victory of God over sin and the devil. But before this glorious fulfillment, there will be a time of great tribulation. The Bible warns that in the last days, perilous times will come. The world will be plunged into chaos and darkness as the forces of evil gather for one final assault against the kingdom of God. This is the time of testing, the hour of trial that will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. For then, there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The signs are all around us, the world is in turmoil. Nations are rising against nations, there are wars and rumors of wars. Natural disasters are increasing in frequency and intensity. The love of many has grown cold. And now, as we are approaching the final hours of history, the stage is set for the ultimate showdown between good and evil. In the midst of this chaos, a figure will arise, a man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. He will deceive the nations with signs and wonders, and many will follow him. But his reign will be short-lived, for the Lord will destroy him with the breath of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3-4 says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The Antichrist will bring a time of unprecedented persecution upon the saints of God, but God will give them strength to endure, and they will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Finally, while fulfilling this prophecy, when the fullness of time will come, when the souls have been saved and the cup of iniquity is full, the heavens will be opened, and the Son of Man will appear in the clouds with power and great glory. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. But for those who have put their trust in him, it will be a day of great rejoicing. We can find this statement in the book of Revelation 19 verses 11 to 13, 
which says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So, children of God, the last prophecy of the Bible is about to be fulfilled. The King is coming, the Bridegroom is coming for his bride. The final trumpet will sound, and those who are dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. But for those who have rejected Christ, for those who have mocked and scorned the messages of the Gospel, there will be no escape. The great white throne judgment is coming, and every person, great and small, will stand before God to give an account of their lives. The books will be opened, and anyone not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verses 11 to 12 says, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. So, children of God, this is the final prophecy, the last word of warning from the Lord. There will be no more chances, no more opportunities for repentance. The time of grace will be over, and the door to the ark will be shut. The righteous will enter into the joy of their Lord, but the wicked will be cast into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Beloved, this message is not meant to scare you but only to awaken you. The Lord, in His mercy, is giving you this warning because He desires that none should perish but that all should come to repentance. He's calling you to turn from your sins and seek His face while there is still time. Do not harden your heart, do not delay. The day of the Lord is at hand, and it will come like a thief in the night. This is not just another prophecy, this is the last prophecy. The final chapter is being written, and soon the book will be closed. God himself has said this, the end is near, and the signs are all around us. The question is, will you be found faithful when the Lord returns? Will you be among those who have kept the faith and finished the race, or will you be among those who shrink back and are destroyed? The choice is yours, dear child of God. But for now, I request you to make a choice and come forward to join me in this beautiful and powerful prayer. Let us pray together now, Heavenly Father, the Almighty Creator, we come before you with hearts full of reverence and awe, acknowledging that you alone are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Lord, your word is eternal, unchanging, and powerful. It has been our guide, our comfort, and our hope throughout the ages. But today, as we stand on the precipice of the fulfillment of the final prophecy, we humbly bow before you, seeking your grace, your strength, and your wisdom. Lord, we recognize the urgency of the times we are living in. We see the signs all around us, the wars, the famines, the earthquakes, the rise of wickedness, and the love of many growing cold. Your word has foretold these events, and now we see them unfolding before our very eyes. We acknowledge that we are living in the last days, and we know that your return is imminent. But Lord, we confess that we are often weak, distracted, and burdened by the cares of this world. We ask for your forgiveness for the times we have been complacent, for the moments we have allowed our faith to waver, and for the ways we have neglected to fully surrender our lives to you. Father, 
we ask that you would fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Empower us to live boldly and faithfully in these last days. Strengthen our resolve to follow you, no matter the cost. Help us to be vigilant, to keep our lamps burning, and to be ready for the return of our Bridegroom. Lord, we do not want to be among those who are caught off guard, those who are unprepared when you come like a thief in the night. Instead, we desire to be found faithful, to be among those who have endured to the end, who have kept the faith, and who will receive the crown of life that you have promised to those who love you. Lord, we also lift up those around us who do not know you. We pray for the lost, the broken, and the hurting. We ask that you would open their eyes to the truth of the gospel, that they would come to know your love and grace. Use us as your vessels to share the hope of Christ with a world that so desperately needs it. May we be bold in proclaiming your truth, unafraid of the persecution that may come. As we await your return, help us to encourage one another in our faith. Let us spur one another on toward love and good deeds. May we be united as the body of Christ, standing firm in our faith, ready to face whatever may come our way. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of your return. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. We trust in your perfect plan and we look forward to the day when we will see you face to face. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.